Hi, Aaron. Hi, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> you look stunning. Oh, thank you. I like your braids. I like your braids. Mm. Thank you. I'm getting a little bit of an echo. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, we can Maybe, hear you. Yeah. Also, if you want, you can just mute uh, Zoom and then uh, we will sync up the audio from Instagram Live. Perfect. Yeah. That's better. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, hi from Japan. Oh, we love that. Hi, Japan. Hi, Japan. There was Korea back there, too. I saw someone. I know. Yeah. Oh, so I love that. We, we got the, the world in the thing. Yeah. So for Aaron, I mean, since this is your first time and for anybody joining us for the first time, this is our second Base Range Community Conversation. We were here last month in August. Um, we were lucky to, to talk to um, Andre Lavelle, but today we have Aaron DeGroff, and Aaron is a special person. Um, she is very involved, very involved with activism these days. She's an artist, and she's also out here with, with us in uh, Los Angeles, and we're lucky to talk to her today about her activism and what she is doing to bring change to the world today. Well, Thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for saying yes to our invitation, and uh, for you know getting ready to share your wisdom to the world. Of our course, from all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Hudson Valley and Japan. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try to read comments and talk to you at the same time, but yeah. we'll do Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Erin, would you please uh, share a brief uh, introduction about yourself to, to our audience yeah. so that we can start from there? Yeah, most definitely. Um, well, first, thanks again for having me. I'm super excited to chat with you two again and chat with all of the um, lovely friends that we have with us. Mm -hmm. um, so I could go on for forever about <laughs> what I do and who I am, but to keep it fairly simple, um, I'm an artist. I dabble in the mediums of painting, writing, photography, uh, body work, energy work, massage therapy, um, activism in the last five months, four months. Um, and right now my world, aside from my art, it consists of um, being kind of on the front lines here in LA um, as the revolution unfolds in America. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a short, very condensed version of my <laughs> life right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going to tap into that five months yeah, of we'll, your life we'll now. We're going to get into, we're gonna get into that. <laughs> Perfect. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you did say five months, right? So your organization is called We the, we the Movement LA, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. And so how did you get involved? What is that story? And, you know, how is it going now? Um, so... On May 30th, um, L.A. experienced uh, a series of riots and um, police brutality and um, just ah, dis a very large moment of distress in our community. Um, for those of the people that are on here that are from L.A., um, at Pan Pacific Park, but also just near Fairfax, so that side of town, um, on May 30th, um, some unfortunate events went down and that following week a series of really large protests um, kind of exploded all around the city and so that Tuesday myself and a friend of mine went out to Hollywood to a protest uh, that YG called and mm -hmm. YG didn't show up so there was like 2,000 if not more people just like aimlessly wandering the streets um, and me and a group of people that I did not know and they did not know me kind of all just naturally started leading by the end of the protest. We got people home safely. Um, there was no arrest, no, no casualties, like nothing um, that had been happening happened with, with that group. And so it was kind of beautiful to us. And by the end of it, we were like, okay, let's do a protest again tomorrow and the next day. And then by the end of the week, uh, we had broken the record for the largest protest in L.A. Uh, now we hold that second ranking because there's been a lot more protests, uh, which yeah. is beautiful. We love it. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, we became a group a week a week after um, mm -hmm. protesting together consecutively for that first week of meeting one another. 
and now we're about four, almost five months in. Um, wow. Yeah. What's the age group of the, of the age group of your group of of, of uh, rhythm movement? So our youngest is just turned 21. I think we might still have someone that's 20, which is awesome. Wow. And I think our eldest is about 35. Um, we're 17 strong, but we also have people, like in terms of our core group, but we also have so many um, age, like bigger than that um, of age ranges supporting mm -hmm. us. So it's beautiful, honestly, to see everyone come together. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> when uh, when you look back before uh, May 30th, before you guys started this movement, do you think your life has changed drastically? How do you see your life now? Um, I think I think it's double parted, right? Like everyone in the world experienced Corona, so yes. everyone's lives drastically changed, even in the last just year. Um, so like yes life has changed but it's also um, a point in my life where I feel everything that I have experienced has given me the tools and has built me to be prepared for what's happening now mm -hmm. um, so like maybe in some subconscious part of my mind I'm like yes I knew this was gonna be how it happened but yeah. um, either way yeah life has definitely changed um, and it's it blows my mind every day <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's good work though, right? I mean, and in five months, I'm sure you feel like you've changed personally. And um, I hope that you feel like you've um, encountered some sort of change from your own efforts, from We The Movement's efforts. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I think all change, despite how uncomfortable it is, is great change, mm -hmm. um, whether you see it in the moment or you see it later. So there's definitely been parts of um, of the movement, not even necessarily the group, but just the movement that's happening right now in general that have been challenging and emotional and difficult. Um, but it's building this resilience in myself and I also think in my group. Um, the biggest change that I've seen just in LA and the community within my group um, is this idea around unity and being able to like put our differences aside mm -hmm. and still unify under one idea um, which is, you know, we're looking for equality on all fronts, you know, right. the, the simple statement of Black Lives Matter, you yes. know. Um, so being able to unify under that um, is great. And, like, I think that's the first step to seeing the bigger changes that we want to see. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So when you wake up in the morning... Um, and you you know that you're going to protest. We, as a lot of us, you know, all over the world to watch it in the news, it looks dangerous, and and we are just so proud of young people who are there peacefully protesting and knowing also that their life might be at risk. And you are one of those. You are one of those young people, you know. Um, how do you prepare in the morning, and what comes in your mind? Are you Are you scared? Are you afraid? Are you like... I have to go and do this. Yeah. How, how, how are your feelings before you go um, into the streets? Yeah, I love, I love that question. Um, honestly, each time is really different. Yeah. Like weekly, if not daily, things are changing um, on the front lines in the streets. Um, so, you know, there's been some mornings that I've woken up knowing that I had to protest and I've been nervous, quite frankly. Um, because of different attacks and certain um, uh, energies and things that we've been seeing uh, from our um, police force. And um, so there's been definitely days where nerves hit me. But I like to start every morning with, like, intentionally breathing and intentionally, like, grounding myself um, and deciding before anything, before I interact with anyone, before I go out and I'm on the streets in this like collective energy of like, hey, things are going wrong here. I, I ground myself. So like when I'm out on the street, if anything does happen, I'm alert, I'm aware. Um, but more than anything, it feels, you know, that feeling that you have when it's something that you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. and you you do it and you're like oh wow this feels good um yeah 
because our protests are peaceful, that is like what we pride ourselves in, in terms of like the community that we've built. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, <laughs> I say that ultimately the feeling ends up being um, feeling like safe and protected and feeling unified with my, with my people. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily like let the fear take over. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it sounds like you you let your drive of of what you know needs to be done kind of outweigh the the fear. And I'm happy that you acknowledge that there is still nervousness, mm -hmm. there is still fear there because you're still human, right? Like you're not going to just go into this fearless. You know the risks, but it's it's um it's very admirable that you continue to do so anyway. I think. Yeah, honestly, everyone that has been, like, showing up consistently, like, every single day, every single week, like, even when they're, you know, there's been times where I haven't been out, and there's been people, like, 20 deep, like, facing an army full of police in front of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so it's definitely one of those things that, like, it's not, everyone doesn't have that in them. There's so many different ways to show up, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely not something to just like take lightly either, no. you know, right. we, we know what we're getting ourselves into when, when we go outside. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So shout out, I commend everyone, shout out mm -hmm. to everyone doing so that. You're all there for each other and protecting each other. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's beautiful. Um, so Aaron, um, it, it takes a lot of vulnerability to be able to to go out there, which I applaud you as well. Mm -hmm. And what, when you think of vulnerability, what, what does that mean to you? Mm. Um, vulnerability to me, the first word and feeling that comes to mind is that exact smile you're giving me, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But honestly, like, it is probably the greatest gift of life to like step into anything vulnerable anything scary like stepping into truth to me is vulnerability whether that is your own truth or whether that's a truth that you're seeing outside of you right yeah. being able to like engage with that and be have the courage to like step into those things and mm -hmm. do the work um vulnerability is not something that is easy or meant to be easy but it gets easier um mm -hmm. I don't know, for a suggestion for really great videos for everybody, Brene Brown on vulnerability. Yes. It's a yes. TED Talk. It's amazing. You should check it out. Yeah. Um, oh. But yes, brief answer to vulnerability. That's a, that's another, like, can of worms to open. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. Maybe you already touched on this, but why why do you feel so inclined to to go out in the streets um, as a young person. I mean, we all, we all can um, show our activism in different ways, yeah. right? But why do you feel like you choose to, to go about it the way that, you know, that you do? Um, part of it is feeling, um, Feeling just like my instinct, like knowing that this is how I want to show up right now and feeling a sense of responsibility, um, especially in our generation of being uh, the people that are taking the baton right now from the older generation that showed up in the 60s, but also um, feeling responsible towards like building bridges for the next generation. So um, it's work that has to be done, I feel in my heart um, and in my life, I have the tools and the capacity to show mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Um, so I am, um, and everyone that's been standing with me and beside me, I think feels similar ways, you know, it's just, it's like, no question. It's like, okay, what else would I be doing right now? Yes. Um, I know there's plenty of other things to be doing, but either way it's, um, I'm, I'm honored to show up and use my voice and encourage other people to do the same thing and just share my story, share my tools. Um, I think people are going back to this idea of vulnerability. It's our most vulnerable part of life right now. Um, it's raw, you know, people are scared. People don't know what to do. 
Um, mm -hmm. And there's so many lingering questions. So like if we can create, if the, we the movement can create, if in general as communities we can create safe spaces for people to be able to come and be vulnerable and speak and talk about all the craziness going on, even just that is like, yeah. how I want to keep showing up, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when you talk to your mom, do you, have, do you remember, um, because your mom is a, you know, is a generation before in the 60s, so they have a, a little different experience than we do. Do yeah. you hear, do you see from her stories, do you see any like relevant things that are reoccurring, like that are happening again and again, like history repeating itself? Um, yeah, the most plain and simple one, cops are still killing black people, still murdering black people for something as simple as riding their bike in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Dion Kinsey died a couple weeks ago, a week and a half ago, 10 minutes from my house, riding a bike in his neighborhood. Yeah. You know, unarmed. So that right there alone <laughs> yeah. is still, is still happening. Um, I don't think too much has changed. I think it's just taken different shape and different in a different face. Mm -hmm. And um, where we have the opportunity now to, um, because of social media, but also just like our generation has the power to uh, to stand up and face it in a different, more unified way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have allies on our hand now that we did not have back in the 60s and the 50s in our parents' generation. Yeah. Um, and in a different way, there was, but it's everything is a little bit different now, which is to our benefit, I think. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. That's a beautiful way of looking at it. Yeah, and yeah. and um, more on allies. I mean, mm -hmm. your interaction with, with people um, who may not feel oppressed or may not be oppressed, they come up to you in these protests, I'm sure, and they are curious about, like, what they can do. Like, how can they yeah. help? They see the issues as clear as day now, mm -hmm. you know. Like mm -hmm. you mentioned, we're in a pandemic. You know, we, are, we have our phones in our faces all the time. It's kind of hard to avoid these truths mm -hmm. now. So how do you embrace these allies who may not know exactly what to do and what advice would you or do you give to them? Um... So a lot of allies are just showing up on their own accord, which is great. There's a family from San Diego that we love that has just been coming up, like, consistently every protest we've had, every event that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, and they're my favorite example, um, showing up, asking how they can help and be a part, but um, really just, like, simply showing up and by asking is them doing more than like we could ask for um and then being able to take their experience back to their communities and to their family and mm -hmm. show them and tell them hey look i was a part of a peaceful protest or look i have a community of people of color of black people around me now where we are engaged in their culture and their events and um have been brought around other people in their community and have enjoyed our time um just I think showing up and engaging, honestly, is what I know for me, what I encourage allies to keep doing. Mm -hmm. um, and personal experience for anyone, despite your color, is the greatest teacher. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, that for me. There's so, there's so many different avenues that I feel our allies and different groups are educating allies to take. But mm -hmm. really just continued education through personal experience and through showing up is my favorite route. Um, yeah. yeah. So when someone comes to you and because I feel like allies come from different, uh, how do how can you say they, different, they the backgrounds or different backgrounds, but also they they have uh, um, some some have less less knowledge about you know about uh, Black Lives Matter or they just started or others have. Uh, some ideas they think are right. How do you create space for all of them to feel embraced and uh, not feel shut down or be scared of, the, of, of, of even approaching uh, someone like you? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's a great question. I think it all comes down to like, the language that we use and how we speak to people, right? There's mm -hmm. a stark difference in being at a protest, right? And like screaming and yelling at people and like letting our anger and our rage like come through 
vibrationally, like when we're talking to people and marching, Mm -hmm. that's a complete different uh, feeling than like going out and marching with people and engaging in conversation with them, showing people, you know, hey, look, we we all come from a different place. We all may be feeling different, but like we're unified under one idea right now. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I like to do with the crowd is ask a series of questions, right? To show people our alikeness, but also to show our differences. So like, hey, raise your hand if in the last two months you've been feeling sad. Raise your hand if in the last two months you've been feeling angry and you don't know how to show up. I make mm-hmm. everyone look around. And usually everybody's hand is raised. doesn't matter what color. You can be Mexican. You can be white. We're all black. human. Yeah. Exactly. We're all human. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I think that alone makes people feel like, oh, I'm in a safe community right now. Mm-hmm. Just outside on the streets with these, you know, a couple hundred people, if not less. Um, and I feel then just creating that precedent allows people to feel safe to like come and approach and share their point of view without feeling like, Oh, I'm going to get attacked if I think or express mm-hmm. myself differently than this person. Yeah. 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 I love that. Yeah. I, I do. Love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you've been protesting, you've been uh, speaking up, you've been, at, you, you're, um, you've been active. Yeah, like constantly every day if it's not every other day mm-hmm. um do you see change or do you have hope for change mm. what what's yeah. that? how does that look like for you <laughs> i love this question <laughs> um yeah i i think hope is useful if action follows right mm-hmm. um we can hope for change of anything Um, But I think what our generation and our society all around the world now is realizing, okay, we can hope and wish and pray and meditate and want to manifest, but, like, there's this real-life element of, like, actually doing the work and taking (laughs) divine action or just taking action in general to, like, build towards what you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, hope hope is useful. Yeah, I have hope, but I'm so focused right now on intention rather than hope and action Mm -hmm. like action-based hope yeah Um, yeah yeah Yeah, and that's that's a really good point because Mm -hmm. yeah i mean even with people um people who want to do stuff like not just allies but people who are kind of in the thick of it um a lot of times it can either be scary or it can be kind of demoralizing you see all this all these waves of negativity come through and you're like i don't i don't know what to do like i know you know i know this person's doing this this person's doing that but maybe if i just hope that something happens you know things are eventually going to blow over i think that's a lot of people's mindsets um but i'm happy that you brought up action in that you know it's one thing to hope and yeah, then it's another thing, thing to, to, you know, to the best of your ability, you actually go forth and do stuff, you know, yeah, take as much action absolutely. as you can that suits your, your lifestyle or however you want to show up. Yeah. yeah. Even having this conversation, you know, like, yeah. even yeah. Though, if, even if it wouldn't be public like this, be live, but having it with your kids, having mm-hmm. it with your parents, you know, um, and just, you know, create that whole dialogue of like making our humanity better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it, I know everything in the world right now is really uncomfortable, especially like the political climate and the racial climate. Everything is uncomfortable, but like digging directly into that discomfort, you mm-hmm. know, on the other side of that is truth. It's something so beautiful. Yeah. And so I really encourage people and that type of vulnerability to like keep digging in because mm-hmm. for generations, right, we've seen the same thing. Like, that's not happening. Oh, I don't see that. It's like, no, guys, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. It won't work for us. The yeah. old cycles have to be let go. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another question? Well, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what do you, what brings you joy? I mean, yeah. in life and through your work, what, what is fulfilling for you? Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you can look back at it and be like, that was, fulfilling that was joyful yeah. I'm, you know i'm a better yeah. person now <laughs> um so 
and on a personal outside of like the movement things joy for me looks like dancing looks like singing looks like being with my family with my friends um seeing joy in their lives being able to like see people break through hard times i think is also something that brings me a lot of joy i'm like yeah. what i feel like proud older sister um <laughs> yeah. yeah i i love that i love um I love love. Love brings me joy. Um, <laughs> but inside of the movement, I think the things that has brought me the most joy is, is truly being out on the streets and chanting with people and, like, sharing this unified, like, pain and a longing for, like, you know, change and for things to shift dramatically. Like, being able to not feel alone in that. Oh, <laughs> You know, like, it's joy, but it's also just, like, a, a sense of, like, oh, I can breathe because I'm not the only one feeling all of these things right now, and I don't know how to, like, process it. Um, so right. that alone is, like, a joyful yeah. sight just to see yeah. all types of people together, like, hey, cool, we're here, we're showing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that, to cultivate that community to mm-hmm. that sense of growth as as one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So what what's um what's your message to um young folks who are growing up not right now or who are already grown ups, but um mm-hmm. what what's what's your message to them about uh especially our world today and um I don't um and for them and how they can, you know, make a difference, what steps they can take, things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, first we're in the age of information, right? So like educate yourself. If you don't know something, you have ample amount of resources to research and find, um, what you resonate with and find what's true for you in your life or in your country or in your state or wherever you are. Um, Mm -hmm. and also to, to look at the, how history is cycling through, right? So, um, educating yourself on the past finding tools to bring yourself present and know what's happening now and then start building foundations for the future. Um, So that looks, you know, different for everybody and that's Mm -hmm. completely fine. Mm -hmm. So even in that, knowing that how I show up or Dedeen, how you show up or Alex, how you show up, Mm -hmm. that may look different for all of us and that's okay. Um, But when we find what works for us, honoring that and being in that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in tor- and towards the future, you know, again, our generation, um, both, you know, millennials and Gen Y, are Gen, they Y? Gen Z, no. Z, Y, Y. X, Y, Z. I have no idea. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, no, but all of us as, as a collective, right? Um, yeah knowing that like what we're doing right now and the work that we're doing even if showing up for example is like you sharing your art sharing your voice Mm -hmm. knowing that doing that is encouraging someone else in the future to be able to do so like if we did not have the civil rights movement Mm -hmm. we wouldn't be encouraged to show up how we're showing up now Mm -hmm. you know right yeah yeah, it's, it's very much like it's building blocks, right? And you're talking about passing the torch, passing of the torch, and it's like a generational thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you know, the civil rights movement, if MLK didn't do what he did, if Malcolm X didn't do what he did, um, then we wouldn't have this platform today. Right. And the same thing goes for today. Like, if we're, not, if we're not doing what we're doing today, the generation 20, 30, 40 years down the line also won't have that that thing so it's a very cyclical thing and i think hopefully it's empowering us to yeah. you know make more change and things will get better um we'll get stronger our voices will get stronger and hopefully more unified as a result hopefully. yeah 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 absolutely hopefully yeah we need a new hope action word <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hope actually. Yeah, so, um, Hope actually. <laughs> so in the next 15 minutes, we dedicate our time to our audience mm-hmm. so they can ask any questions. Uh, yeah, I saw so many questions rolling through. 
Yeah. We so promise we weren't ignoring you guys. We were just trying, <laughs> trying to get to, the whole speech out there yeah, for 30 minutes. To, there's one um, that I saw that actually kind of caught my eye when I was talking. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got weird for a second, but um, <laughs> <laughs> there's one from Black Lives Matter, South Pasadena. Shout out to them. They've yeah, been yeah. holding it down. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a comment about, do you know, the police just raided Black Unity, downtown LA, be interested, act with news. Um, I did not know that. That's new information to me as of right now. Um, Black Unity has been uh, protesting in front of City Hall downtown Los Angeles consistently for the last four and a half months, sleeping outside in tents, like straight up there every single day. Um, And act with news, follow him. He is a phenomenal, like, phenomenal human, but also just someone who has been there on the grounds with us from like week one, documenting everything, um, everything that's happening. So he's like in and out of all the groups showing real life media in real time, um, what's Mm -hmm. actually happening on the streets. So um, yeah, thank you for letting me know about that. Sorry to bombard your questions, guys. Go ahead. No, 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 no. No, no it's okay. We're, we're, we're also scrolling through to make sure we... Uh, to make sure we didn't miss anything. We didn't miss anybody. I would, just, I would just ask you a few questions myself. Okay, go for it. Um, also, yeah. thanks for staying on live, everyone who's on here. Yeah, thanks, um, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Aaron, you, um, you had an accident. Mm. A while back. Sometimes I feel like the more things we go, the more hard stuff we go through, it creates a thick skin in a way yeah. for us. Um, would you share a little bit of how you were doing before the accident and um, and how the accident changed your life or the, your perspective towards life? Yeah. I feel like people relate to that. I was fairly young when the accident happened. I was sophomore in college, so <laughs> like what, 20? If that, yeah, 20. Um, the accident itself was a, an event that caused me to lose scaling on the entire left side of my body for two years. Mm-hmm. So um, it was a journey of not knowing if I was ever going to, like, feel or be, you know, normal again. Mm-hmm. Um, so it put my mind in this place of, like, fight or flight, but also, like, being able to be functional um, in that, like, bodily experience. So it taught me a really valuable lesson of empathy, one, Mm -hmm. for people who don't have an answer to their chronic pain, right, Mm -hmm. that there is no cure or there is nothing that anyone can do to help. Mm -hmm. Um, but also taught me resilience in a a way that I hadn't learned it yet. So, like, knowing, hey, despite the amount of pain that you're in, if you continue to move forward, right, Mm -hmm. like, that's the best thing that you can do for yourself instead of, like, continuing to let, like, the pain and all the things that come with that, like, eat your spirit alive. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, yeah, it changed me drastically. It opened me and expanded me to... Um, further my my journey and my art it opened me to um, really just like the divine magical part of life Um, Mm -hmm. pain is I think our greatest teacher if we allow it to be right Um, yeah yeah thanks for the question (laughs) (laughs) I like you know I um I, th- I, th- I think those moments um, they are like highlights in our lives and they um, when we're, we survive something like that, it makes us look at life differently and mm-hmm. appreciate it even more because it's the, yeah. almost like a second chance you've just been given. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, so it, it helps to see life completely different mm-hmm. and, uh, and uh, be more graceful, I would think. Yeah. That's um, like the biggest yeah. thing, grace, for, for ourselves and for other people. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So um, for those of you who have been watching, um, Aaron has been part of We The Movement. It's, uh, mm-hmm. They have an Instagram handle. We can just add it in our... Uh, yeah. uh, we, the, we The Movement. Dot LA. 
dot la that's right yeah with the commit type in there yeah with, the, <laughs> with the movement dot la and they you can go on their page if you we, we like to support nonprofits here when we're doing these talks um so if you would like to support them they have um they have a link in their bio on their for their uh, gofundme account if you want to support them you can just go on their on their uh bio yeah click on that link and support them so that's, that's also another way of showing up <laughs> it is another way of showing up because all of us are with your pocket for free, for free. <laughs> uh, yeah. but no it's that's the best part though like the so people know and are aware the money goes towards um us being able to like continue to put on more events so like for example we did a juneteenth event a fifth of july event um mm -hmm. we had some artists come all that showed up and did everything for free but even being able to just like keep you guys safe with like food and water and yeah. um gas in our cars so we can like keep yeah. people protected these type of things is what what you would be donating to um, also, if you don't want to support in that way, that is totally fine. I understand it's a pandemic. <laughs> like, we all have coinage to save. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we are. We had a protest yesterday um, mm -hmm. in the neighborhood of Limerick Park. You can show up that way and march with us if you're local. If you're not local, um, reach out over Instagram, message us, ask us questions. Um, we have a Go Vote campaign rolling right now. So mm -hmm. if you are in America, go vote, um, please. And that's, the way, that's another way too. Like so yes. very, that is very important way. way of showing up. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we're, you know, honestly, there's so much that we can tap into um, and a lot as a group that we're tapping into. So just follow us, if anything at all. And we're going to continue to be a bit more active on social media as well as uh, continuing to show up how we can in the streets. Yeah, yeah, and there's something you mentioned the other day when we were um, interviewing you for the podcast about uh, one of the you guys' uh, goals is to build um, the uh, our communities, our, uh, communities of color around the city or around the country, because there are um, more mar the, the, the communities of color are more marginalized than other communities, right. and that's one of the, your goals. Can you tap into that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so the idea is. <laughs> wanting to do what we're already doing um in terms of like being able to just gather people within the black community but allies everyone um gather people under one idea you know that we're supporting black lives but we also you know it's a even further than black lives i think we're fighting this like the powers that be and the people um mm -hmm. if anything so really i think the best thing that we as a collective of human beings right can do right now is continue to like build a new foundation so like if we can do what we're doing in LA and unify people um under under this name of like culture and mm -hmm. black culture right mm -hmm. then we can do that in other states as well mm -hmm. um and that's really what we want to see recreated but like it's it's not just we the movement's responsibility it's not just my responsibility it's not just yeah. you two's mm -hmm. responsibility you yeah. know there's groups in every single state right now um there's people individuals uh collectives all showing up mm -hmm. and so i think as long as we continue to like do the work and make the noise and communicate unification on the scale that we're wanting it is doable um mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't think anyone has has a direct answer right now, but I do think building new foundation, you know, like showing people useful tools, right? Like even something as simple as like, okay, this is how you grow food. This yeah. is how you can get water. And this is how you breathe and meditate. And mm -hmm. this is how we ground. And maybe this is a tool you can use to ground yourself before yeah. you go and face the world outside. Um, yeah. yeah, so I think, yeah, unifying under that. I feel like I've said the word unify a trillion times, but the most important part. It's the core of what you're doing, yeah. the core of what you're yeah. doing, you know, yeah. having these conversations with our lovely community here. Mm -hmm. um, and even just being able to 
and we like to use the word or the, the phrase holding space, mm -hmm. yeah. holding space for each other um, and embracing ourselves, embracing the community, um, and particularly for those who aren't local. Because, I mean, there's a lot of people here who are overseas, not in uh, the States. Um, and for them to be able to be involved or at least just listen to this conversation yeah. um, and see that only thing that, I mean, anybody wants is that unity and mm -hmm. is to um, be able just to embrace one another. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's that's an important thing. And I'm, I'm yeah. lucky. Dean, I think you feel the same same way. We're all lucky yeah. to be able oh, just yes. to, yeah. to be in this moment and to share Absolutely. ourselves with everybody. Yeah. With everybody. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you, guys. You you are king and queen of holding space right now. Yeah, oh, we're well, doing it. We <laughs> try. We try. We're trying. <laughs> Oh, thank you guys so much. This is awesome. Um, thank, thank you. you so. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing your wisdom, sharing your story, your work with our audience. Mm -hmm. We thank everybody who was able to stay on and asking questions and saying hi from, I saw uh, bonjour from probably France, Paris, oh, yeah. <laughs> all these countries, yeah. Um, Denmark, everyone, we're mm -hmm. all human. All we want is happiness. So yep. let's give it to one another and our, our world will be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> so um, please go ahead and support with the movement if you can um, and, or come uh, or reach out to Aaron and be part of the, uh, the peaceful protest that's happening. Um, what else? Come to America. <laughs> come to America. <laughs> <You're funny. laughs> Um, these discussions happen every month. Yeah. Uh, it's the second Sunday of a month. Mm -hmm. So we will see you again uh, on a second Sunday. And um, anything else? Yeah, well, thanks again for joining us and supporting us <laughs> and embracing us for our second live stream. Um, once again, we're lucky to talk to Aaron um, yeah. and to just gain insight into what, you know, what different people are working to, to, uh, to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just blessed to be able to, you know, to be here. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. 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 Peace.